have adventures and sometimes holidays have special meaning because all the family is together. so for everyone i think uh, we all will remember some of the best times we have had with our families is when we have all gone for holidays and we have visited new places now today we are going to uh, read a story about a family who also decided to take a holiday and it was an adventure holiday now what do we understand from an adventure holiday an adventure holiday is when it involves certain activities such as a uh, sports activities or it could mean uh, perhaps the route of travel itself is an adventure sometimes it will drive to certain destinations this family decided to sail to a certain destination and they had certain uh, how shall i say they had certain aspirations they wanted to imitate the trips set out by Jap- uh, captain james cook now captain james cook as we know uh was a well known sailor and uh, he was the one who was uh, involved in the field of exploring and so this family uh, they decided to sail from england to this round trip world and they wanted to do this because they wanted to go and visit and, and see the the entire route that he took and now when you go on a sea route this is the time that this story was written when there was no google maps or there was no internet it was much before that time so people relied on maps as you can see in the background they have mapped out the entire earth with the help of imaginary lines known as uh, longitudes and latitudes and that is how sailors usually tried to travel they navigate the route with the help of a compass and how they see the routes which is the best route to travel now you must be aware that this uh, latitudes and longitudes that we are seeing are imaginary imaginary lines on the map and they help find the route for sailors so earlier they would have the map in front of them and then they would nav- navigate their journey so here all so this gentleman gordon cook he decided to travel with his family and what did he he spent a lot of time learning and preparing for this trip it was not a one day training or a two day training he and his wife they had spent means whatever time they had on holiday they would spend on sailing they would spend in traveling to different places and seeing different uh, you know how they could improve their seafaring skills because they had wanted to duplicate the route that captain james cook had taken and so they were really keen on this particular trip now it took them a long time to practice and so the entire family had focused on this for a very very long time so they were all very uh, you see practically living on a sailboat and traveling and seeing things and it was nice they were having a, a good time it was a learning experience and finally in july 1976 his wife mary son jonathan daughter susanna his son jonathan was 6 this is attending to the taking and how they were planning so here they were sing out and planning their trip to travel however what happened was they had a boat which was the wave walker which was a 23 meter and a 30 ton wooden hulled beauty so they had got this boat and this boat was really amazing they had spent a uh, specific time in making adjustments and uh, trying to you know make sure that the boat was perfectly ready for travel and so here they were doing all these various trips and it was a wonderful wonderful boat so they were very happy and they were quite satisfied so i'm showing you right now the the way a boat is uh, you know made into different uh, parts and what are the parts of the boat these are very important because as we read, read further it will become more significant so then they travel this 3 uh, year journey they had planned to travel for 3 years 
and it was a very long distance that they were going to take but uh, they traveled all the way down to africa and there they took two crewmen along with them and one was an american his name was larry and the other one was a swiss gentleman his name was herb so they wanted to go and travel now the southern indian ocean now the southern indian ocean is known for its choppy waters by choppy waters i mean that the waters are not smooth and sometimes it's a difficult journey over there there have been certain incidents so naturally keeping that in mind they took on these to help us so on the second day out of cape town they started to experience very strong winds over there and for the trip that they were traveling the waves uh, the the wind continued to be it was a gale a gale is a very strong wind and uh, it continued to be like that there was no change in the weather conditions so uh, they figured that you know this will change but it did change and it changed for the worse it did not change for the better the weather became even worse so what happened was at dawn on january 2nd so by 2nd january they were facing really really rough weather and it had become very difficult to control the ship also so the ship itself was uh, in a lot of uh, peril because the waters were choppy it was not safe and so each time the sea was not calm it was a very rough kind of a journey so each time they could see that the waves were getting higher and higher it was not easy for them to be able to be traveling uh, like this but however they continued their journey but the waves were getting to be very very high it was difficult for them to travel now i'm showing you a depiction it's not the exact thing but sometimes the waves can be so high that they can almost topple the ship but usually a very experienced sailor manages to maintain balance but this was one of the very high waves that had risen so what happened was that uh, when they realized that how bad it was they got all their uh, they went through the safety drill now there is something known as a safety drill on the ship when they are traveling and that includes the life boy jackets keeping uh, ships on the side and things like that all these little safety things were made arranged and so they waited and then in the evening the wind dropped and the sky immediately became it was a, but was it a cloud it was not a cloud it was in fact a huge wave this huge wave was so high that it had almost darkened the entire area so it seemed as if the sky was uh, full with rain but actually it was not that it was the height of the wave and that wave suddenly crashed and where did it crash it crashed on top of the boat it did not crash anywhere else except on top of the boat which led to the whole boat almost overturning the boat did in fact overturn and the writer and everyone else along with them he did not know where they were he was thrown with a great impact into the water because the water waves had such a very strong impact on him so at one point he just lost control of it and then suddenly he was pulled back into the water uh, pulled back back into the boat and then suddenly you know by the time the waves are there it, he was almost being thrown around the deck like a rag doll which means he had no control over anything and he was just being thrown left and right and there was nothing he could do absolutely to stop it so uh, he was bleeding he had broken teeth but somehow he went and reached the stern of the ship now let us look at the stern this is the stern if you see this this is the area that i'm highlighting for you he somehow reached this so he could control the wheel and there he tried to control now he began to investigate and suddenly the hatch was thrown open which is this place where the family was there and his wife immediately came in and then she started saying that the decks are smashed and we are full of water which means that all these side areas 
because of the impact of the water they had been totally destroyed and so the ship was slowly filling up with water now what happens when the ship is filling up with water it means that the ship could possibly sink and that is what something they did not like so when the ship was full of water here what was happening all their belongings all their items everything were floating around in the water and they had somehow tried to uh, you know get the uh, get the water out of the ship otherwise the ship would definitely sink so they had these two helpers with them and one was harry the other one was herb and uh, both of them were frantically trying to throw water out of the ship and so what happens was that the writer makes effort and he tries to somehow close these areas where the water was coming so here we are looking at the hatch he had to shut the hatch otherwise water kept going inside and then he pulled a lot of canvas fabric canvas material was there to pull it around so that it could control the flow of water this continued the water was cold it was freezing but he continued with this routine and so what happened was the hand pumps also had somehow started to uh, block and the electric pump was uh, short circuited the water rose and then he found that two ha spare hand pumps that they had they had been thrown overboard so some of the things that they had that they needed with them on the journey had been thrown into the water and there was no way they could get it back now then he found another electric pump and then he slowly used that and they started to pump the water out so all these efforts they were making they were struggling somehow to get it going and now his daughter the writer had his two children with him and what happened his daughter was there with them and his daughter had a head injury she was lying in bed quietly and her son also his son also had some injuries but she did not say anything she says no no i didn't want to worry you because you were trying to save us all so everyone could see that they were in a very uh, difficult situation but she the little child she was barely 6 or 7 years old and this little girl did not come and complain to her father because she could see that he was already struggling so she thought the best thing would be to keep quiet and let him manage things and maybe later on there would be time for him to look at their feet now what happened the next day that is on 3rd of january the pumps had the water level under control so they were able to take some time of rest in between but somewhere in between they were not able to find out where the water was coming in constant consistently that means pani kahin na kahin se abhi bhi boat mein ghus raha tha unhone kaafi kuch to manage kar liya tha lekin phir bhi they were not able to find and pinpoint the place where this was happening so what did he do he looked around and then he discovered that the boats main rib frames were smashed down to the key matlab ki unka jo boat ke hisse the wo kaafi toot chuke the aur usme ab zyada space nahi tha kuch bhi nahi tha bilkul end tak jo thi wo boat ka kaafi nuksan ho chuka tha let us look at this sketch where this is there that, that means down to the keel the keel is here this is the keel so from here till here the boat had been destroyed to a large extent so obviously it was not possible that the boat could stay for very long and these people were pretty much on the verge of death however he continues to uh, support his family he continues to have courage so they said except a few covered partitions so andar jo thodi bahut cupboard bani hui thi aur jo unka hal tha ship ka थोड़ा सा एरिया जो था वो सब उनको किसी तरीके से संभाल के रखा हुआ था तो द बोट वॉज लिटरली बिंग हेल्ड टूगेदर बाय वेरी लिटिल दे डिड नॉट हैव अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स गोइंग फॉर देम नाउ दे हैड सर्वाइव फॉर 15 आवर्स बट वेव वॉकर वुड नॉट होल्ड लॉन्ग इनफ फॉर देम टू रीच ऑस्ट्रेलिया सो ही न्यू दैट विद दिस बोट इट वॉज नॉट पॉसिबल दैट दे वुड बी एबल टू कंप्लीट द जर्नी टू ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड सो he started looking at the navigation maps so unhone dekha ki ye boat to bahut zyada nuksan ho chuka hai to ab hame koi aas paas ki jagah mein ja ke kahin na kahin koi island dhoondna padega to unhone navigation se map ke charts unhone nikale seafarers ke jo hote hain aur usme unhone dekhna shuru kara to unhone pata chala ki yahan pe sabse paas wala ek island hai jo ki ek french scientific base hai and this place was known as isle amsterdam 
नाउ पूरे ओशन में तो ये जो आइलैंड्स थे इट वाज लाइक पिन प्रिक्स मतलब आप देखिए ये मैं आइलैंड है कोई इनकी मैं अगर फोटो एनलार्ज करूँ तो पूरे इतने बड़े समुन्दर में तो ऐसे लगता है कि कोई छोटी छोटी डॉट्स हैं गूगल अर्थ पे भी अगर हम कोई जगह देखते हैं तो वो दूर से तो बहुत ही छोटी लगती है तो हियर ऑल्सो दे थॉट द सेम थिंग सो एनी वे ही सेज इफ वी रीच दिस प्लेस देन वी हैव अ चांस ऑफ सर्वाइवल बिकॉज द बोट वुड नॉट सर्वाइव एट ऑल so again after 36 hours of continuous pumping they had reached the last centimeter of water that means kafi pani to wo sara nikal hi chuke the lekin ab unka dusra challenge ye tha ki pani andar na aaye ab aur jo andar pani ghus raha tha usko rok na tha to unko ye raha tha ki jitna bhi damage section hai usko kisi tarike se hold karna hai aur phir wahan ja kar hum us jagah par pahunch jaye so uh, they found some food and some biscuits and then they ate their first meal in 2 days matlab do din se kisi ne proper khana bhi nahi khaya tha thoda sa tent ko nikal ke unki wife jo thi wo lekar aayi unhone usko khaya but this was again very short lived itna peace nahi tha unke paas aur thode time ke baad vir jo tha the situation was again very desperate the weather was again very very bad so they encountered bad weather and because they encountered bad weather again the situation became very critical so now they were really really uh, you know worried as to how they would be able to cope with this kind of a situation and it just became even even more difficult for them har baar unke liye to pareshani kathinai jo thi wo badhe chali ja rahi thi anyway they continued to endeavor and continued to make efforts now this i'm showing you a photograph is when the wave is crashing on top of the ship and this kind of impact of water can really destroy the frame of a ship which can lead to further damage so when this happened the writer goes to meet his children and uh, his son john asks him are we going to die but uh, the writer tells him that no no we would make it but daddy he tells his dad we aren't afraid of dying if we can all be together you and mummy sue and i now what happened it is the children they were not afraid of death they just wanted to be with their parents they wanted to be safe with their family they did not care about anything else and now this statement of his son this comment by this little boy of 6 years old makes the writer more determined to go and find a way out of this situation so what does he do he go 